Thank you all for coming to this Inform Your Community Craftivism event. We're happy to see you. Uh, my name is Robbie. I use he, him pronouns. I'm here um, in my living room with my crazy orange hair. And um, you have closed captioning available down at the bottom of your Zoom. Uh, at Inform Your Community, we offer events that combine really important, impactful information with having fun. So you can visit us at www.informyourcommunity.org. You can find social media links on the bottom of our site. Tell your friends to sign up for our mailing list. Um, and of course, you can donate using the donate link at the top right of the page. If you're watching the recording of this video, please take a moment to like and subscribe. So today we're doing an LGBTQ pride um, event. Um, it's a little funny that we're doing it in February, right? Because this is usually associated with June, but we're doing it now. It's a it's year round importance. Um, one clear indicator of its importance is that it's uh, there was a Gallup poll in 2020 and 13 over 13 percent chose not to identify as heterosexual or straight. Um, so this event is part of our craft of craftivism event, um, our craftivism program, excuse me, where adults learn different art techniques discussing relevant social issues. Um, our facilitator today, I'm happy to say, is Keith Newhouse, founder of Newhouse Creative Group. Hi, Keith. Hey. Um, he's the author of My Tio's Pulse, a children's book that lets children know in an age-appropriate way what happened at the Pulse tragedy in Orlando um, that affected the LGBTQ plus community and, and others, um, and how to cope with it, how to feel safe after a tragedy like this. Um, Keith, welcome. We're honored to have you. Thank you. Honored to be here. Thanks for being here. Um, we're also grateful to have John help us with tech issues and monitor the chat. Hi, John. Um, and of course we have with us, we have Stacy, uh, who's our resident crafter, our expert crafter. Um, if you have any questions or comments uh, on the craft or the topic, you can unmute yourself. You can talk or write in the chat and we'd love to see your work in progress. So feel free to show your project to the camera. Um, Stacy, hi. Yeah. Hey, Ravi. How Actually, are you? Done, I'm good. We've done a lot of these events together, but that was like the most lackluster introduction you've ever given me. I feel, <laughs> uh, I'm going to try not to feel insulted on that. You're our one. expert crafter. You're always here. You're always our, you're, you're our rock. Thank you. You're that. See, now that, that's an introduction. <laughs> So yes, I am. I am the expert crafter, so to speak. Um, thank you, Robbie, for that excellent, excellent introduction. Sorry. And, uh, <laughs> Tell us about the craft. <laughs> I am a, a white woman wearing a gray shirt today. I've got a salt and pepper hair. It comes out a little bit um, like light reddish blonde on the film uh, on camera, I guess. And uh, my pronouns are she and her. And I just want to take a moment. I know Robbie introduced his pronouns as, as well, especially considering. This event is, event is an LGBTQ plus focused event. It's important to just kind of stress what pronouns are, why we use them. Obviously pronouns we use to refer to ourselves and um, it's useful to know because you can't always identify somebody's pronouns from, um, from what they look like uh, and often you can't. And so uh, we, some, it, it's useful for all of us to identify our pronouns because that helps to normalize that act of doing so and that awareness that not everybody will have the pronouns that we might think they have by looking at them. Um, so, so important there. Um, and also, um, you know, people have the right to self-identify. And so if somebody asked you to call them Tom, you call them Tom, right? So if somebody asks you to use their uh, pronouns, it's a, it's a great thing to use the pronouns um, to show the respect for that person. Um, so our goal today um, is to uh, not only teach you about LGBTQ associated uh, topics, but also to teach you how to embroider. And I know, those of you who are here, you're very excited about it. Those of you who might find out this information uh, later, we're watching the video. Uh, we're excited to have you do that as well. Uh, and so don't feel obligated as you're going through this event to memorize everything. You will be able to, we'll send out this video to all of our attendees and um, to all those who registered. So um, you will be able to, you know, look at it at a later time and kind of pick up where you left off. So don't feel too stressed out if we're going too fast for you. We only have an hour. So trying to get, in, we're going to try to get everything in but you'll definitely get the event video later. Um, and if you have any problem with that, let us, let us know. Um, uh, you know, reach out to us, say you need the video. So, and uh, Robbie asked, why did I choose this craft? So the reason I chose this craft is because I love the concept of love is, and it's love. I guess I'm a, I'm a softie, I'm a romantic. So, um, and, and our craft is gonna be based on a heart. We're going to make a beautiful embroidered 
um, heart, rainbow heart. So let's see, so you know, both cameras. So just so you know, we have two cameras set up. So if you can't see the angle that's close up, I try to put it on both, but you can probably swipe your screen and see. Um, and actually, if we could have, um, John, if you get a chance to put in focus, uh, me and the craft and Keith, that would be fantastic or spotlight us so that everybody can kind of see those, that would be swell um, when you get a chance. So in any case, um, I wanted to, to, to have this craft because of the love is love concept. Um, and um, yeah, that's important, of course, and love should be celebrated. Uh, and also I want to mention, you know, I talked about kind of what I look like. In my case, I have short hair, but I want to, to mention also this idea of gender expression and the idea that, you know, how we, how, how we look visibly um, is, is part of our, is, is our gender expression. And so how do, our, how do we present our gender identity? Uh, so if we have long hair, if we have, you know, shorter hair, if we have, um, you, know, you know, what kind of clothes we wear, what color clothes we wear, or, you know, every aspect of how we dress could in theory represent or express um, our gender in some way. Uh, it also doesn't have to. So um, it's funny because when I was young, yeah. um, uh, gender identity wasn't like something we talked about back then. Uh, it, it was becoming OK to be gay. So I don't remember too much about it. But as somebody who's a little bit older now and gender expression becoming a lot more open, uh, it's been really cool seeing the like leaps and bounds that have been made, like uh, Will Smith's kid, Jade, yeah. kid Jaden um, started wearing skirts. That was like the first time I remember gender expression really becoming like a big thing. But a lot of people laughed at Jaden. Um, but then, of course, there are others who are cheering for them. And in just a few years, I feel like we've seen so much more freedom in the way that we express our gender. Um, last week, actually, I was at Disney and was really pleasantly shocked to see that uh, when I was passing by one of the restaurants, one of the employees who had a really long beard was wearing a dress, a full dress while serving. Um, my best friend's husband, who, who was with me, he works at Disney, and told me the dress code at Disney, while way back when it was very, very, very strict, they now allow for anyone to wear any of the costumes for a specific location, regardless of gender expression. That's that's amazing. That's so that's so inclusive, and it's a it's right. a lovely thing. I, I I had known that about Disney. Um, that's great. Uh, and and you know what though, gender is the only thing we can express. We're going to express ourselves right now in terms of our crafting. So um, I'm going to get us started, if that's okay. And um, I look forward to hearing more from, from Keith and some other folks uh, throughout this, this great conversation we're gonna be having today. A few caveats for this craft, just so you know. Uh, one is this is not a kid's craft. Our kit is not intended to be used by kids. Um, the needles are a little bit blunt, but they are not blunt and kid friendly. So we do not uh, want you folks doing this with kids. Um, it's intended for adults. Uh, second thing I would say is that we're not really using, let's say, best practices for, strictly speaking, for embroidery here. We are going to learn how to embroider, but it, you're going to want to, you know, if you really want to take this up as a hobby, and we hope you do based on what you've learned today, um, you're going to want to do your tutorials about that. So you're not going to learn all there is to know about embroidery. We're just going to give you some little, little, a little bit of what embroidery is like. And also towards that end, we're not really covering the basics. So like what tools you need or things like that. And this is going to be the most basic embroidery craft. Uh, and so there's a lot more information out there and we hope you'll, you'll look it up. So for our, for our kit today, some of you have our kit. We'll tell you more about that. But before we do, you should know that everybody should grab a scissor and either um, a pencil or a, a dark colored pen. And whether you use the dark colored pen or the pencil is going to depend on whether or not you have this particular bag. So when we sent out our kits, we sent out two versions. We actually ran out. We had so many people registered. We ran out of our, our original uh, supplier bags. So we had to buy a second set of bags. If you have this red bag and you want to make any markings on your bag, you're going to need to do that in a darker colored pen. But you may have our other bag that we sent out, which is this one. And you should be able to use a pencil for this one. OK, if you have your own kit at home, uh, I'm not your own kit, your own materials that you're using at home, which we'll talk about in a minute, the pencil should work just fine. Um, feel free to have that pen handy as well. So if you are getting your materials from home, here's what you need. You need some uh, embroidery floss, ideally. And this is what embroidery floss usually looks like. We often associate it with um, friendship, friendship bracelets, actually. So uh, you'll want that embroidery floss. And then the other thing 
that uh, you're going to want to have is a needle. Uh, if you don't have embroidery floss, by the way, you can use a, a very thick um, thread. So this thread, for example, is pretty thick, but it's, uh, it's more of a thread. Uh, but the thicker is the better because thicker means it'll take up more space. So um, embroidery floss or a thick thread. You'll also want a needle. Ideally, a needle with a bigger eye will help um, have that thick, let that thick um, thread go through it. And then the other, other item you're going to need is whatever you're embroidering on. So maybe you have an old t-shirt you want to use or a bag you want to add something to. It is your first time doing this, perhaps. So maybe you don't want to do it to something that was expensive, but maybe you have something lying around and you want to uh, do something fun with it. Feel free. I suggest a thin material, preferably something pollen, cotton or cotton blend. Um, so a t-shirt's perfect for something like that. Maybe a pajama set if you have. So in any case, or maybe you have, a, a like I said, a tote bag lying around. If you um, have our kit, what you received in your kit is a bag. And like I said, you either received this bag or this bag. Okay, so there's two bags you could have you received. And then also um, you have the tag that came on your bag. And that tag is going to look something like this, which is a heart in a circle. Don't throw that out, okay? If you've got it, don't throw that out, that heart in the circle there. You're gonna hold on for that for a second. If you've got, the, if you had the white bag, we, we gave this to you separately. If you have the um, red bag, it was attached to the bag. And then you also got in your, in your little kit, you got a needle, sorry, a needle, as well as a safety pin, okay? And you got a little tiny bag full of string. So those are the items in your kit that you would have gotten. Um, now, having said that, let's see. Oh, and the needle is a blunted needle. What we're not going to use today that's often used is uh, often you might use a, a, an embroidery hoop, uh, which is basically a circle with another circle inside of it. We're not using that. We don't need that today. Uh, although, you know, technically, could it help? It probably would help. It helps keep the what you're making kind of steady, um, especially when you're using a thinner fabric. It might be a little floppy. So the embroidery loop um, uh, makes it uh, a, little, a hoop makes it a little bit more steady. And then the other thing we're not using is sometimes people like to put a backing on the fabric underneath um, so that it helps with opaqueness and keeps it more sturdy, keeps it thicker. We're not going to do that. We're just going to embroider right onto this material with no uh, extra backing to that. While you all gather your material, uh, and, and uh, if anybody, uh, Robbie or John, you want to put in the chat what those items were, feel free, especially for the at-home items, including um, the scissor and the pen. Um, while you're gathering your materials, I would love to take a minute to try to understand who all makes up an L what we call you know, the LGBTQ community, um, LGBTQ plus community. Um, and specifically, when we're talking about that community, we're talking about folks who don't necessarily uh, identify as strictly male or female. Um, as well as um, folks who don't necessarily think that um, you have to um, be attracted to a person of the opposite sex. So if you're, if that falls under your category, then you you are in this LGBT community, which is uh, uh, what we're going to be talking about a lot more today. And actually, as of 2022, um, to kind of acknowledge that diversity uh, and to be inclusive in the United States. On a passport, you might not have known this, but on your passport, you can actually use X as an identifier instead of male or female, M or F. Um, I actually did not know that till I looked at your website and saw it there. Um, yeah, I was really excited to see that. Uh, yeah, so there are many identities that make up the individuals in the LGBTQ plus community, but that acronym in particular stands for lesbian, gay, bi, trans, and queer or questioning. Uh, the plus is representative of the other identities making up the community. And the plus helps us keep the acronym from becoming too long. Because I have seen it recently where it's become LGBTQIA2S plus, which, uh, so it just keeps getting longer and longer, or as we call it uh, in a, a playful way, alphabet soup. <laughs> it does uh, get long, yes. <laughs> <laughs> However, a number of people in the community identify with these and have since reclaimed them are bringing them into a more positive light. Uh, my pronouns are he and him. I'll be completely honest. It took me some time to figure out the whole pronoun thing. Uh, like I have a friend who came out to me a few years ago as non-binary 
and asked me to use them for their pronouns. For years, I knew them as he, and I didn't understand why they wanted to change their pronouns like that until I realized that it doesn't really matter. It's none of my business why they want to change their pronouns. Um, they asked me to do something really small for them, and I'm just going to do it because I love them as a friend. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I still, I still slip up once in a while, but I usually need to catch myself or they will, and then I just apologize and move on. Um, it could just be a little difficult when you know somebody one way for forever and ever and ever, and then you have to make that change, but it's really just worth it to make them happy. That is that is a, a great point. And it really reminds us of the importance of our like avowed identities, the, the ones that we identify ourselves as, um, you know, in, and these identities exist on a, on a spectrum and, and um, we may be anywhere on that spectrum, right? And also that where we are on the spectrum may change over time. So like you said, somebody who identified one way earlier can avow a different identity later on. So it's, it's really important. That's a great acknowledgement. And I love what you said, Mickey, about the, the four letters coming out when it was just four letters. Yeah. I mean, kids <laughs> one day are going to be coming out and they're going to go, there's 26 letters when I came out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, something else I saw on your website that was interesting was, according to the 2013 Pew Research Center study, 41% of LGBT adults said they were aged 10 to 14 when they first felt they might not be straight. Um, but 43% of LGBT adults said they were aged 20 or older before they first told a close friend or family member that they are or might be lesbian, got gay, bisexual, or transgender. Um, and I actually personally, I didn't realize until I was 22 that I was bisexual. Um, looking back, I realized I should have known earlier, but I had absolutely no idea at the time. And what's really funny about that is uh, I, I was one of the three straight theater majors at an 85% gay college. <laughs> um, I, I had so much of a better dating life had I known back then, because like everybody <laughs> at that college was gay. Uh, the number of guys that came up to me in the cafeteria and hit on me saying, some nice looking macaroni and cheese we got there, isn't it? <laughs> I was actually uh, also hit on by the theater critic for like a major New York newspaper who invited me to go see uh, some guy named Hugh Jackman in an opening night of Oklahoma on Broadway. And uh, I, I said, I'd love to go as your friend. And he goes, I'm not really looking for friends, but like, <laughs> it would have been so much fun. Hey, well, you, you, remind, you remind us, love, love is love yet again. Uh, and coincidentally, Keith, we are going to start with a heart for this craft. Uh, so we can we can move right on to that. Although I'm loving your anecdotes, I, I really appreciate them and, and thank you so much for you know sharing them and opening up about about your life and your experiences. It's it's so appreciated um, and clearly so very relevant to the topic. So I'm very grateful for the craft. What we're going to do is we're going to start with the outline. Okay. So if you have our kit, here's what you're going to do. And again, I'm going to try to show you in the 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 main screen as well as in the small screen here. Okay. If you want to see my fail at it, feel free to follow me. <laughs> oh yay! Oh, you're gonna do it too? Ooh, I'm, I'm gonna try. I don't know if I'm adult enough for this. I might need another adult to help me with this. Uh, well, I I it's a, it is a challenge doing the talking and the, the crafting. So I wish you good luck. So, but you'll get the video afterwards. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut your circle, okay? And I recommend cutting from the inside. Instead of coming, cutting outside that white, cut inside the white. And the reason for that is because you don't want this too big. So for those of you who have our kit, either one of them, you're going to take that circular a circle with the heart in it and you're going to cut out, you're going to cut out the heart. For those of you who don't have our kit, you can do a little freehand art or a heart. Or if you have some kind of template you want to use, you can go ahead and, and find that template. My only caveat for you, if you're making it on your own somewhere, is to make sure that your heart is pretty small. You want this no bigger than an inch and a half. I would I would say no bigger than an inch and a half, maybe two inches at best, but I think you're you're that's gonna be too much. So I'd say an inch and a half as at its widest point, maybe two inches at its widest points, okay? If you did it with the heart outline, it would be like this. And if you did it without the heart outline, it, you can see it's a bit smaller, okay? So now if you if you have your own materials, you're going to just draw freehand on your whatever it is you have, okay? You can go ahead and draw your heart, okay? Again, don't make it too big. It doesn't, you don't even need to have the whole 
Um, you know, sometimes pens don't really write, write well on fabric. It's fine. You just need to have a decent idea of where your pen is going. So if you can see, can you all see that? Yeah, yeah, there you go. A little bit. You can see the heart there. Put it on this one. Um, you can see the heart. So you're going to freehand that heart if you're using your own materials. If you're using our materials, you can do this in one of two ways. If you have the white bag, I recommend just taking your heart that you have, that you've cut out, and go ahead and just, I'm gonna put my two right next to each other. You can draw, put your heart down, your heart template down, and just um, outline around that heart template. Does not have to be perfect. Hearts can be really fun shaping. Shaping, shapes. So here you go. So I just went ahead and made a second heart right next to the first heart. So I've got two hearts there. One was freehand, one I outlined my pattern. If you have the red bag, it's a little harder to draw on it. So you can try, if let's say you have a permanent marker or you have a, a dark marker, maybe you can draw on it. But I'm going to suggest that if you, if you find it difficult to draw on, the red, the red bag, ooh, I just hurt myself. So be careful, everybody. I, I stabbed myself already too. <laughs> yeah, I should have warned everybody about that too. These, these implements we're using are sharp. So make sure you are being careful. So you could take your pin and wherever you want on your bag, you can go ahead and pin your heart directly to the bag. And then what you'll end up doing is that'll be nice and firm on here. You'll be able to embroider around it, okay? Following my instructions, okay? So you've either hand drawn your hand drawn your heart, made an outline of your heart using your the the template, or you have pinned your heart to the um to the bag. That, that's great. How, I'm, excited. You know? I'm really excited to see where this goes, Stacy. But while we're working <laughs> on that, can we take a moment to talk about Pride's origins? I would love that. So Pride began in 1969 at the Stonewall Inn in New York City. Uh, members of the LGBTQ plus community were being repeatedly harassed and it finally reached a breaking point on June 28th, which is why Pride Month is in June. Uh, the two trans women recognized as being the leaders of those who fought back were Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera, and the fighting lasted for six days. Wow. Wow. That's that does not sound pleasant. That sounds pretty awful. Six days, and didn't they um didn't they declare the Stonewall Inn a national monument and even a national landmark? Uh, they it's did. They did absolutely. I was there a few years ago actually when I visited New York. Um, partly due to this very historical event, they did make it a national monument. Um, exactly one year after the fighting, then they had the first Pride Parade in New York City, which was held with many more Pride events following that. Oh, well, I'm going to ask you to hold on for a second because okay. I want to get us back into this craft and I, but I also want to talk a lot more about pride. So let me do my, our next step on the craft. Okay. So this act that we're going to be doing in just a minute is the most, is two things we're going to be doing. They're the most difficult part about this craft. Everything else, honestly, is pretty easy. So I want you to go, if you have our kit, I want you to go ahead and grab the black string from the kit. Okay, and be careful a bit with the string colors. Some of them might look alike. It might look purple or depending on the light, it could look pink. So just try to make sure you're grabbing the right color string when I, when I mention a color. But grab, go ahead and grab the black string. I feel like I'm untangling Christmas lights. It is. And actually good that you said that, Keith, because one of the things that might happen is you might tangle everything. Not you, Keith. I'm sure it's not going to get tangled for you. But for somebody else, you're going to end up with this big blob of... Um, this big blob of, uh, and sorry, I just lost one of my cameras, but we're, we're gonna work on that. But you're gonna end up with this big blob of um, string. And as you pull them out, if you're not careful and you just kind of rip, you know, pull them really fast, you may find that um, that they are, uh, forgive me, you may find um, that they might tangle. So if they do tangle, what you're going to need to do is uh, just be gentle as you pull them out. Just try to be as gentle as you can and um, go ahead and not like make it worse by pulling it really, really tight. Sometimes you pull it tight, you make it not really tight. So you're gonna wanna pull it very gently. And if you do come across a knot, just make sure you're untying it. 
If on the off chance the non is at the very end, then you can go, uh, you can go ahead and maybe snip off from, if it's the very end, sure, you can snip it off for the color that you need, um, but not for black. Black, we need the whole length of that one. Um, the other thing you can do, well, that's basically it. If, it, if it's in a knot, try to unknot it. Try not to make it worse by making it too tight. And if it's at the, the knots at the very end of the string, there's a little leeway in how much of the string you need. So you can just cut that off. So you're not tangling too much, dealing with the tangles too much. The other thing that you're going to find is that um, we have this needle. Okay, so the first hard, so, okay, we're gonna have this needle. This needle has a very tiny little needle um, eye is what they call it, okay? So they have a very tiny little eye. And what you're going to find is that with this eye of this needle, here I am back again, with this eye of this needle, you need just a little bit of the string. In some cases, for some of the strings we've given you, they might fit just fine, okay? But for others of the, of the strings that we've given you in the kit, you're going to find that it may be too thick for the needle. In that case, I'll show you what you're going to do. Give me one moment uh, to do that. I just wanna say I'm shocked that I got it. It took me, I've been doing, I saw the directions ahead of time. So I've been doing this and working on it for about five minutes now and I finally got it threaded. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It is the threading the needle is the hardest part. And you did it with the whole string, right? You didn't have to take it apart or anything. Yeah. So you can, the black should be okay if you can to go ahead and thread the string. If you can't, you can always wet it a little bit. Usually that is a nice way of saying uh, lick it. <laughs> so you're gonna thread it. As you thread it, you'll notice that a little piece sticks out. And then what you can do is pull that little piece. If you find, get this out of here. If you find that the edge is frayed, okay? What you're going to do is go ahead and cut it with that scissor. That's why it's good to have the scissor handy. You're going to go ahead and cut it with the scissor. And then that may make it easier, okay? Once you see that little bit coming, coming forward, then you can uh, pull it from the other side, but it definitely has a knack to it, okay? So your first string that you're going to be doing is black. So go ahead and thread the needle if you can. You can see I'm, I'm being a little challenged here by this. You'd think I'd have these ready next time. I think that's what I need to do is have them ready. You can don't see be discouraged if you don't get it first. Like I said, it took me about five minutes of staring at this needle and going, get into the eye there. Come on, thread, you can do it. Now, the other thing we can do, which I'm gonna show you if I can't get mine in easily, eh, I'm gonna show you. So when you're dealing with embroidery floss, one of the things you can do, and I don't know, can you see me doing it? Oh, is you can, it's called splitting the thread, okay? So I wanna show you how easy this is. Take one piece of the thread away from the other, like when at the very edge, peel like a little piece of thread away from another piece of thread, and then hold one piece of thread in your hand, and I'm doing this on the close-up camera. You one, have one piece of, of the thread in your hand, and then what you're going to do is pull the other threads down. I, I want you to see how easy this is, okay? Let's see, can I show you? There you go. Okay, so I've got, you see how all this is bulked up over here? It's a little hard to see on this camera. It's not focusing nicely, but I'm gonna hold this bulk part and I'm just pulling the other one straight up, okay? And in that case, for the most part, you're going to be able to, to get that string down. The black is a little, the fabric, the material is not ideal to do that in. But um, the other embroidery floss that we have is going to be much easier. So try to get it, try to get it um, through the needle, through the eye. And if you can't, you can pull down. The other thing you can do, is, and that's called splitting. The other thing you can do is what I just did, is I took off a little piece of the top of it I'll admit that was not intentional. It just the string broke. That's okay. And what I'm doing is now threading the, the other piece that I have of it. Cutting it again to make sure. See, I think Keith, you were better at this than me. Who knew? Um, That's okay. You, you'll see what mistake I made in, in the next step. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. 
So you're going to get your needle in there. And eventually, at some point, you're going to start. There you go. There you go. Okay, you get your thread in. Now, in my case, the thread on the bottom is going to be thicker because this particular thread just kind of pulled off, but it worked in my favor because now I have um, this thread and that's fine. That's all I needed is to get it on the needle. Okay. So once it's on the needle, there's two things you can do. By the way, I mentioned that there are two hardest parts of this entire project we're doing. One of them is getting it, the thread on the needle. And the other one is splitting. And you can see now I'm actually splitting the rest of it um, down, taking off that extra. So splitting is making that thread thinner by separating the strands. Those are literally the hardest parts about this craft. Hopefully you've got that folks done. And of course, if there's any questions you have or if we're going too fast, definitely let us know um, in the chat or you can even just tell us. So once you've got it threaded, I finally did Keith, once you've got it threaded, there's two ways you can go about doing this. Typically in embroidery, you don't use a knot at the beginning, but that does mean you have to like pay more attention and hold on to, to a string, which I'll explain how to do in a minute. While you're doing it, that's kind of a lot to concentrate on. Truthfully, the first time, the first like 50 times I did embroidery, um, I just made a knot. So you can choose whether you wanna do it without making the knot or whether you're going to make the knot just to make sure um, it, it goes in, okay? What I mean by that is if you wanted to make the knot, you would take the end, so not the end that's in your um, hand the, of the needle, but take the other hand and, and you would just make, I would say make a double knot, okay? So that is one way to do this is you make a double knot at the very end of it. That way when you pull it through your fabric, the knot will hold it in place. So I'm gonna show you on my white because the black will stand up a bit better on the white, okay? But the same process is what we're gonna do here is gonna be the same thing that you do, whether you have the white, whether you have your own white bag, you have your own material, or you're using the red, the red kit. You're going to start with the back. So you're taking your needle and you're putting it through the back. So it's a little harder. So if you wanted to have like, oh, I want the heart to be on the bottom here. It's a little bit harder of a task because you basically have to spend the entire event with your hand in the bag like this. Uh, it's a little, you know, cumbersome. But if you did it that way, totally fine. It, I think it actually looks cuter on the bottom than it does on the top, but it's a little bit more challenging. What Make else? sure you don't safety pin your bag closed, by the way, like I did. What'd you say? <laughs> Make sure you don't safety pin the bag closed like I did. With <laughs> Yes, that is a very good point. Thank you for that caveat. He is exactly right. Yeah. Make sure you don't safety pin the bag closed. If you do, you just unsafety pin it and then put it on again. Good, good, good caveat there. I'm, thanks a lot. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, so you're going to go from the back. So you've got your needle, you're going to the back of your fabric, okay? And I want you to find with the needle in your hand, but don't poke hard, okay? Find the middle top of your heart, the part that comes in like the V. If it's a V, it's the bottom of that V. And that's where I want you to put your first stitch, and you're just going to pull your thread through. Don't pull it fast, because even if you knotted it, it might just pull right through the, the fabric like that. Okay, it so worked. don't, is, did that just happen? No, 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 I got it, I got it to work. <laughs> Yay, so you're gonna pull it in. Now, if you knotted it, it's okay, as long as you go gentle, it won't pull out. If you didn't knot it, here's what you have to do, is I'm holding the back end of the string with my finger, okay? Some of you out there may knit, or you may, you may use a sewing machine. So the next step we're going to do is going to be somewhat familiar because you already know the idea. And that is when you're starting off a project, you, yeah, sure, you can knot everything, but oftentimes the way you start helps to make sure the string stays put so that you don't have to have a kind of unsightly or thick knot, okay? Uh, no, you don't need to double. I did see that in the chat. You don't need to double the, the string. A single string is fine if you're using our thread. If you're using your own, uh, materials at home and you only have a thin thread, then yeah, I'd say you're probably better off doubling uh, doubling that. And so you would pull this string all the way through to the this, the string that's dangling off by the needle. To double it, you would pull that string all the way down and then probably knot both of them together. Um, so it's a little more sturdy. So, okay, so you're gonna hold on. If you didn't knot the back, you have to hold on. Let's see if you can see it here. You have to hold this little dangling piece inside your fabric, at least for the next few steps. What these steps are is 
it's the equivalent of if you're sewing, what you would do is sew three stitches, sew back three stitches, sew forward three stitches, right? And the reason you do that is to hold that first string in place so that when you do the rest of it, it doesn't pull out. So we're kind of going to be doing that. So what I want you to do, you've got your string in, okay? Leave a good tail in the back, okay? So that you can hold that. You have a little wiggle room if you pull it a little bit too hard, but try not to pull hard. What I want you to do is go, now your, your thread's at the top. You're going to now go back through the thread, follow your heart outline, okay? Go back through the thread, about a quarter of an inch, I would say, back through the, the thread so that your needle goes through the material and back to the inside of, of the bed, okay? And now you have your first stitch. And you're literally just making sure your stitches as you go along follow the heart, you just outline. If you're doing it like Keith is, where he's got the, the heart pinned in, okay? You're gonna to wanna to make sure you always keep that heart in the same position. Otherwise you're gonna end up with like a rectangle or like some other weird shape because you keep moving that heart around. So maybe as we're going along, you can kind of show people too, Keith, if you hold up yours, how you're holding that cardboard in place as you're going. Okay. You mean how okay. I'm not holding it in place? <laughs> yeah. Well, this first one, it's fine. You have a little leeway on the first one. Okay. So then what you're going to do is now you're going to go back. You have to find, because you can't see your outline from the back. Okay. So you have to look forward and kind of have your needle just fly, you know, go different places. Don't hurt your finger while you're doing it. And I want you to go um, half the distance of what you just did, like an eighth of an inch. Okay, and now you're going forward again from the back. So now you have one stitch on the back side. Let's see if I can show you. One stitch on the back side. So you have one stitch on the back. I'm sorry, my camera's not focusing. You have one stitch on the front and one stitch on the back. Okay. Okay, and now what I want you to do is I want you to go back halfway in between that. Okay, so you're going backwards now. Okay, so you're going back towards the original stitch from the outside to the inside. Okay, and this is called back stitching. This is how you make it so you no longer have to hold that little string in the back. Okay, so now I've got two stitches in the front. I should have a magnifying glass. One of them is half the size of the other one. This is called back stitching. Okay. And now your needle's in the back again. Your thread's in the back again. Now you're going to find the, the second hole you made. Okay. The second hole you made. Let's see. So we had the first hole where this, this dangly string is coming out of. And then you had another hole after that. Okay, so the second hole. The first hole is where you have a string coming out of right now, and then the second hole. So you're gonna go back through the second hole that you made. It's called back stitching because you're going backwards. Go back through that second hole you made, and you can see from the outside, make sure that you're going through the right place. Okay, and really where you're going to find yourself is in the perfect position to now seal that one random space you have between the two stitches, okay? So there's like an extra weird space there. You're now going to stitch forward the length, the distance of that blank space. You don't want to cover up any of the black part. You're just covering up the white part that you know should not be white right now. And now the needle comes back backwards again. And now you have solid black. Does that look good? Is that what yours is now, Keith? I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, we'll, we'll go with that, sure. <laughs> oh no, did I lose you already? Am I losing people? No, I'm just, I'm just a total like klutz when it comes to arts and crafts. <laughs> no, no, no. We're, so we're going to do this again because I'm sure other people are lost. In theory, you can do this back stitching the entire way, okay? I don't want us to, it'll take longer. But 
I am going to do it one more time. Okay, to show, and maybe I'll do it more than that if you guys want to learn. So your needle's in the back. Okay, let's say your needle's in the back. You're going to move forward through the through the material to get to some the next spot about a an eighth of an inch in your pattern in your heart pattern. Okay, so that's the forward part. So now there's a gap. How are you following me so far, Keith? You're like a good litmus test if I'm going too fast. I'm with you, I'm with you. Okay, so now your, your thread is in the front, your needle's in the front, and there's a space between where your needle just came out and the previous stitch you did. And it's empty, you know you gotta fill that up, right? We don't want it to look like dashes, right? So we have to fill that up. So we're going to go back halfway though to cover half of that empty spot. So that's the back stitch. So uh, Misty asked about the front and the back stitch. So this is the back stitch part. So you're going backwards halfway, okay? And there's Make still- needle doesn't go through both sides of the bag. Just one side of the bag it has to go through. <laughs> yes, yes, Keith is correct. Make sure it only goes through one side of the bag. So you have, you still have a spot that's showing. It still looks like a dash, but it's a smaller dash now. So now we have our needle in the back. We are going to go, let's say you're like skipping over a pond call that blank section of a pond, okay? We're gonna skip over that pond from the back. And our needle is going to come out on the other side of that pond. So our needle's now in the front again, but we haven't covered that dash. We still need to cover that dash. Waiting for Keith on this one. I think I've, I think I've kind of got it. Um, okay. <laughs> so now it's, it should be in the front again, but you have a little blank spot, right? We don't want yep. that spot. So now you're going to go forward again, jumping that pond, that blank spot, to where the beginning of the black thread is. Okay, the beginning of the black thread. And now you're going back through it. There's your back stitch. And now it's all solid. For those who have the red bag, just so you all know, Stacy didn't tell us, but it's the expert level of this craft. Oh no, is it harder on the red bag? <laughs> it's a lot more difficult, I think, without having like the outline be able to see it because we're having to hold this, the, yes. like you said, you have to hold the cardboard piece in place to make sure you're hitting the outline. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, maybe if you have a permanent marker, you want to go run and grab it, feel free, and then you can draw the outline. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. So, but it sounds like you followed along there, though. I think I've got it, though. Yeah. Okay. So, what that serves to do is to make sure this little piece that's hanging on in the back is. It's not going anywhere. Now you don't have to hold that anymore. The rest of it, we're just going to use forward stitches. And all you're going to do is um, keep following your heart outline. Okay. So now you're going from back to forward again, and there's going to be a dot, uh, um, a dash. There's going to be, I'm going to call it a pond. I like that. But we're not going to back stitch anymore. Again, I want this to be simple. So I want you to just keep making little ponds okay so it's going to look like dashes so now you're just making sure you follow your outline of your heart the entire way keep and you're going to see all these dashes in it so you're going back and forth i just want you to get that outline shape okay so you're going through the fabric to the other side and then back Okay, don't worry about backstitching. We're not going to do backstitching. So your whole heart is going to be dashes. Okay, how are you doing on this one, Keith? Uh, I took a break because I know we're going to be going back to some facts soon. So you're right. I'm not going to be able to do both at the same time. It's, it's really hard. I was impressed that you were trying. I really was. I don't do and... walk in chewing gum well either. I'm, I'm a musical theater performer, so arts and crafts is not my forte. <laughs> well, I, have to, I will say this, Keith. You helped during the hardest part of this craft. So I am Good. appreciative of that. I think that helped kept me, keep me going slowly. So I appreciate that. And the rest, honestly, if you if you've um, done this so far, the rest of it will be easier for you, easy for you to do later. 
So for those of you on this, we're just literally making, we're just going through as if you were mending something almost. You're just going to go through the material about an eighth of an inch, pull the material, I mean, pull the thread back, go forward, about an eighth of an inch. Just make sure the whole time you're following your heart. It is a little bit harder if you have the red bags, although the bonus of that piece is I like the red bags better personally. Um, uh, red is my favorite color, as you can see from my jacket. Oh, so I'm with Yes, that. exactly. So you got the right kit. So you're just going to keep going back and forth. Not surprisingly, you can imagine that once you're done going back and forth, I'm sorry, once you're done making this outline of your heart, you're going to go backwards. And, and and go through and cover up those little ponds we made, okay? If anybody's stuck here, I don't want you to get um, lost this early in the craft. So if you're stuck, let us know, okay? But right now, what you should have is a heart that for the most part looks like a bunch of dashes. That looks so good, Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> I've mastered the art of doing it while I'm talking. So, but it's hard. Uh, so what you're going to do then, once you've got that part, is you're going to go back to your last hole and go backwards. Not really going backwards, you're going back around the heart, but you're doing it in a forward mo motion. You're not doing back stitching. So again, now you're filling in, you're, you're no longer jumping over the ponds, you're filling in those ponds. Okay, oh, and I got a little groove. I love that, Jessica. Everyone should follow their heart. Absolutely. Aww, I like so that that's the main instruction at this part of the craft. It's follow your heart. That's it, the best. That is, that is very, very good indeed. Very good indeed. Uh, let's see. Okay. So that should do it. So, uh, yeah. So keep doing that. And eventually, you are going to get back around to the uh, the start where you were. I had a little hiccup here because of my... Stacy, you said to follow your heart around, so... I, that's it, that's all you guys have to do. So when right. you follow your heart, right. for argument's sake, I'm gonna show you on this, when you follow your heart all the way back around, what you're going to see is the heart outline is going to be solid the whole way around. So while you're working on that, I want to show you actually just one other thing here is uh, this is the one on the white. So the uh, black outline is all the way around. Okay, and you want to end it here. Okay, so you're going to end right where you started, but do not cut your heart. Uh, do not cut the string. Okay, because that's going to be where we leave off on the next, um, the next section. So you guys are going to be finishing up your heart. Um, and I am sure we have some more topics to talk about. I know Keith said he's planning on uh, doing some stuff. Just remember when you finish getting back around to the center again of your heart. Uh, and I know over here, you're going to have that overlap. Um, actually, you know what? You don't have to go back to the center. Go back to where you have the solid line. That's all you need to go back to. Go back to where you have the solid line. Make sure you're ending in the back. Uh, if you can, not a big deal if you don't, but do not cut your string. That's the most important part. Do not cut your string. So, okay. Um, while they're working on that, Keith, could you get us back to talking about pride parades? Because I really did want to talk more about that. Absolutely. I love the 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 bag that I sent you that I did way back when and sent you that one, right? The the one that you just showed on the screen. That that was my my arts and crafts. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, to talk about pride, pride is celebrated around the world as a movement about building people up and overcoming the history and pattern of discrimination faced by LGBTQ plus people. There's even an event each year held called World Pride, um, which I believe for 2028 Orlando, where I live, is in the, we've been bidding for, I believe it's 20, either 2026 or 2028, I need to look that up. Oh, that's um, exciting. Yeah, uh, and I know you had it in New York a few years ago, too, because a bunch of the Orlando people went to it. Um, I don't know how many of you have been to a Pride Parade, but I myself was scared to go to one for the longest time after coming out. Uh, now I try to go to at least one every year, if not more. 
But it, it did take me a long time to be comfortable with that idea of uh, being who I was and sharing who I was with the world at this kind of event. Uh, a few years ago, I went to the most incredible Pride Festival, though. Um, I went to Amsterdam. I was taking a river cruise, and it ended at Amsterdam Pride. And instead of having a parade on the streets, they have a boat parade in the canals throughout the city. It was so cool watching all the floats on the boats. That is wow, crazy. I That's love awesome. Amsterdam. Oh my God, I love Me Amsterdam. Too. I would love to go to a Pride Parade there. That sounds amazing. Highly recommend it. That is absolutely awesome. I, I that sounds fantastic. Um, and for me, so so um, uh, uh, we always actually as a family, especially before COVID, it's been a little harder since COVID. Uh, but we've gone to we live in New York City. We've got we went to um, the Pride Parade regularly before before COVID, and um, and we do it. So even though uh, I'm straight, I do it because I want to support my family. Um, so I have uh, family members in the LGBT com community, and so that's one of the reasons I go is to show my support there, and we always absolutely love it. Um, and it's so nice to see kids in the in the you know we take our kids with us, and we always get so many people. It's kind of funny to take pictures of my family <laughs> at the Pride Parade because it's so nice to see kids at a Pride Parade because it it shows that like next generation of inclusivity and pride in 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 that in the LGBTQ community, it's really it's lovely the the positivity um, and the shows of the su of support uh, that my kids get at the parade, which is really lovely. Um, but it you know so we've come a long way with the Pride Parade, of course, and it's you know so many different places, Amsterdam included. But it's it's amazing to know that fifty four percent of people who self identified as LGBTQ plus. Um, report having had uh, a, a relationship that they um, that they hid because they wanted to avoid uh, discrimination. So, so despite all the progress we've made in so many ways, that has been made in so many ways, there's also so much like left to make. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been very lucky myself. Uh, there's always that fear. Like when I started working with the Navy a couple of years ago, um, I was terrified of what would happen if they found out I was married to a man at the time. Uh, my boss knew, but I didn't feel comfortable telling any of my clients in the Navy. Then I was invited to the Navy ball, one of the biggest parties of the year, and I told my boss that I didn't want to go, and he encouraged me to go, and he said to bring my husband, and everything was great. We had a really great time. My clients didn't treat me differently. I was very lucky about the whole thing, but there's just such a fear for so many to be open about who they really are. Um, so speaking of more to be done, uh, I'm excited to do more of this craft. Are you able to show us the next step, Stacy? I am. That was the best transition ever. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Thank you for that lovely transition, Keith. Um, we're going to have to invite you to all of our events just so you can help us with transitions like that. Uh, so at this point, and I'm just finishing up mine, uh, we have our, we should have our heart. Okay. So there you go. Mine is a little, yeah, I, I messed up in one spot. If you did um, what you're gonna see here, it's a good example, it's a teaching moment. So you see my heart, okay? And there's a little loop here. And that's because at some point I didn't pull on the thread hard enough so that it would pull all the way through. But if I do it now, you saw it just disappeared, it vanished. Magic. Right, right, in front, right in front of your eyes, magic. And so now my heart is there. Okay, and it doesn't have that spot. The other thing you can do is if you have a loop and you can't kind of tug it a little bit, don't tug too much, but if you have a loop and you can't um, tug it, then um, you, you can always pull that one, one string. If you go to the back and pull on the, the nearest associated piece of thread and just put it backwards, then the loop will end up in the back and you won't at least have it in the front. So you still have a loop there, which is a kind of weird thing, but it's in the back, nobody's going to notice it uh, by the end of the craft. So it's the important part is that the front looks looks good. Uh, and so are there anybody, uh, by the way, uh, Robbie or John, are there any questions in the chat I should be paying attention to? Yes, so RL was asking why, like where the white cloth came from. And so I explained that the white, the white bag was a replacement because we ran out of the red. It's, um, is, it, is it meshy? Is the red bag mesh? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and 
RL, I have the same bag as you. Um, what I did is I safety pinned the heart onto the bag and then went around the heart. Um, it's a little more difficult. And Stacy did mention the idea of maybe using uh, like a Sharpie to get it to draw on there. But it is the same process that Stacy is using, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. And thanks for, the, uh, for that uh, moment of clarification. Um, Robbie, appreciate it. So Stacey, I just want to do a quick time check. We're getting very close to the end of the hour. Got about five minutes left. Okay. Wow, that went fast, huh? Woo, we're having so much fun. So I'm going to show you quick. So we're definitely not going to be able to get to finish this project um, uh, through the event. But there's actually only uh, one more thing that you need to learn about it, which I'm going to show you. Uh, so let me show you that quick. And then while we're mastering that, maybe Keith can, uh, uh, I'm sure that Keith is going to be able to tell us some more. One of the things, some, uh, some more interesting points that we want to share. One of the things you're going to see um, in in the chat it, are the colors of the of the um, the new pride flag, and so this pride flag is called the progress flag, and it's it's the trans flag with the kind of traditional old school rainbow flag. Uh, they're in there now, and so that tells you what order to do the lines on your on your um, on your heart. Okay, so there's your the heart. Actually, in this case, the heart that I have. Hold on a second. The, my heart. My heart. Look at that. Show my us your heart. heart. There, there you go. My heart is actually not in the right order, but um, in the chat, you'll see the, the right order of what to do. The other thing I want you to notice before I start this last part is notice that I'm doing it on a diagonal. Okay. The reason why you want to do it on a diagonal is because the little tip of the heart gives you a little bit of a problem. If you don't do it on a diagonal, you're going to have to do this side and then cut the string, do this side, okay? And then for the other color, do this side, and then cut the string and do this side, because the top of the heart doesn't go straight across, right? If you went straight across, it wouldn't be a heart anymore. It'd be like a line on top. So it's, you can do it this way, it's totally fine. Um, if you want a straight across one, then you just have to you know, sew each side of the heart top separately. Or if you do it on a diagonal, that's kind of a little cheat right there. We're gonna do our black right across, and then we can do everything up from there, depending on the room we have. Does that make sense? And then you only have to do one little tip of the heart, okay, with those colors. The other thing I wanna mention is that this stitch that we're gonna be using is called a satin stitch, okay? There's other stitches you can use, especially over long pieces uh, of, of, of where you wanted to, to knit, but this one's called a satin stitch, and the importance of that is because um, uh, you really don't want to do it more. It, it's it's a better stitch for longer space, and uh, I think I think Keith was making fun of my stitching earlier. <laughs> but this, yes, you. This is what happened when I tried to use other types of stitches. Okay, so they just didn't come out as nice as just doing a satin stitch straight across. Okay, so there are other stitches you can use. Uh, you don't want to use really a satin stitch for more than um, three centimeters. Uh, so depending on your heart, you may or may not have it more than three centimeters, but we're going to, you know, have a little leeway on that. Okay, last, really, this is kind of the last thing you need to learn, okay, is you just want to go across your heart. That's it. So you've got your, your, your black string. You need a, bla a black strip. So now diagonal, you're going to take your black string. It's still attached to your needle. And you're going to try to make a line right across. Those of you who are a little bit more, let's say, visually or spatially challenged, you like to have things like written down, you can literally draw your lines, OK? So draw one line so that you know where to put those stitches. For the most part, though, this is going to be really forgiving. You're going to go to the end and then you're going to go back. Okay. Just and like don't forget, do. this is recorded, so you'll be able to see this, right? If they if they need to come back to, to remember what you're doing. Exactly. Exactly. So what you're going to do is just go back over it. And now you've got one. Oh. And I have to apologize for something. 
I made it harder for you guys. That is one way to do it, is what I will say. But the other way to do it is, and actually, maybe I'm going to ask you to demonstrate. I know you don't, you're not finished, Keith, but can you do me a favor and take your black string? Then I'm going to show you how to do it. I've got my black string. Okay. Uh -oh, show, us your bag. show us your bag for a second. Uh-oh, did you just uh, unhook your... Nope, I got it still. I'm good. I'm good. Okay, okay. So here, if you want to show us your bag and show us where you are. Um, okay, great. Whatever. It's fine. I okay. want you to just find a random spot in your bag. I think that'll be easier. And at this point, by the way, you should take off your that heart. You, can, you can't, Keith, because you're not done. But anybody, if you're done and you're at this stage with us, you can take off that uh, cardboard heart because we're making the... Now we're doing the inside, so you can't have that heart there anymore. So what you're going to do is just instead of instead of doing what I just did. So what I just did is one way to do it. The other way to do it, if you want to do it quicker, is you're literally going to take your take your um, insert into into insert your needle into one. Just pick a part of your band, okay? Okay. Uh, pull it out. Okay. Pull the string through it. Could you raise your bag a little bit? There we go. Close through. Okay. Now I want you to go about an inch away from that and go through the other uh, backwards. On the back or? Uh, just go an inch, an inch. inch forward and then go through the, through the bag again. Okay. Going through the bag again. Oops. Easy. I got caught on the edge of the bag there. There we go. That happens. There we uh, go. I'm trying to see here in the mirror. Okay. So now keep doing that until you get about four strands together. And what it's going to look like in theory, and again, he's doing it on a random spot on his bag, but what it's going to look like is exactly what you have here, is just a line straight across. This is the satin, satin stitch. I like how you know how to say uh, in theory when it comes to me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd give you a caveat there. Oh, I think I'm getting it, I think I'm getting right? it. So that's what you all want to do. Oh, that is so much easier, Stacy. Yeah, and then you don't have to do the whole thing. So then when you're doing the rest of these, you just need to do that. So you're going to thread your needle again with a different string color. We have the string color order in the chat, okay? Which is white, pink, baby blue, brown, black, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, okay? So you're just going to go follow through on those colors and just keep doing that. Can you show us what you have real quick? Put it real close to the camera. Yeah, see? And that's your satin stitch right there. Just straight across. And that's it. If so I can now, do it, you can. <laughs> <laughs> so so go ahead. We're gonna we're gonna probably be about a, a few more minutes, I think maybe four more minutes. So if you all can hang on a little bit longer. Um and let us see. You've got that, you're gonna go in rainbow order. That is fantastic. You've got all the skills you need. I'd love, Keith, if you could just tell us more about what this rainbow means, which is what a lot of folks are here to find out. Absolutely. Um, well, what's great about this is you can wear it to go out and show your support for LGBT pride, which is great. Um, let's see. So the original flag had a slightly different set of colors, as Stacy said, each with its own meaning. Red equals life, orange equals healing, yellow equals sunlight, Green equals nature, turquoise equals magic or art, indigo is serenity, and violet equals spirit. And then there's the transgender flag, as Stacy said, which was introduced in 1999, as made up of the colors blue, pink, and white to represent different gender identities. Black and brown were then added to represent the intersectionality of LGBTQ plus people of color. And, and it's so great that the rainbow is still used to this day, but the original rainbow flag was made in 1978 um, by Gilbert Baker, uh, and and that was uh, when that rainbow flag first first appeared, which is kind of cool. The so forty five years, basically, isn't that amazing? Wow, yeah, that's absolutely amazing, and it's so great. And we've made so much so much progress, right, Keith? Absolutely. Uh, did you know that ninety three percent of Fortune five hundred companies have inclusive non discrimination policies? Uh, but there is more work. Again, there's always more work needing to be done because only 66% offer inclusive benefits. Yeah, that's we still need a, a, a bit more a bit more work there to get those uh, LGBTQ plus inclusive benefits. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, and and I'm so grateful that that you were here with us today, Keith. And I'm hoping that our crafters got the sense of that um, uh, that with Keith being our model for us today um, of uh, that satin stitch where you're just going straight across um, and just do that about four strands for every color. You should have that enough of that material if uh, you're using our kit. And if you're not using your kit, you can use your own and have plenty of material. But you want to do about four. Um, go four times so that you get it nice and thick. And then with all of those colors, you need to fit them in. So as you're trying to fit them in, you may have to maybe only do three, or maybe you end up having to do five to, to squeeze it in. Um, but once it's done, nobody's gonna be there counting how many strings you, how many times you've done that satin stitch across, okay? So with that- oh, Hi. Oh, that? I know we have another guest star here. Um, what is, what's, uh, that is fantastic. Thank you for the other guest star. And Robbie, can you kind of close us out? Oh, yes, I can. Um, but I want to know the doggy's name. Bella. Bella. I was going to ask. Um, thank Welcome, you. Bella. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Keith and Bella and Stacy, um, so much for this event. This was really fun and interesting. Um, I didn't do the craft this time, but, um, I think it's, I think next time I need to do it. It's been a minute since I've done it, right? Yes. Um, thank you to everybody for joining. Thanks. I, I look forward to seeing some of your finished products. And um, just as you might like to continue to learn more about embroidery, we hope you'll continue to learn about LGBTQ plus issues. Um, to help, we'll send our event video and infographic in a follow-up email by the end of next week, which we encourage you to share with others. Also, please consider committing to a weekly act to raise awareness about issues that impact the LGBTQ plus community. Getting informed at this event is a great way to start. Um, there's also small things like, um, you know, if you know someone is in a long-term committed relationship, you don't have to necessarily assume the gender of anybody involved, you know, that kind of stuff. We're, we're always um, learning how to be more inclusive and how to be less um, assump assumptive. Is that a word? Sure. Make less assumptions. Let's make less assumptions, fewer assumptions. Um, also, you can learn about um, important icons of the LGBTQ plus community like Harvey Milk, Audre Lorde, and more recently, Jazz Jennings, who has a children's book called I Am Jazz. And also you can check out Keith's children's book called My Tio's Pulse, um, which he features in his amazing background there. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, by the way. Yeah, it was great to have you. Um, you were a lot of fun. I wish we could do more events with you, actually. I'm in. Just let me know. Um, <laughs> you were like a team player. You're like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to figure this out. Um, and um, our email will also include a brief survey of what you thought of the event. Please take the time to respond. And there's also a quick poll right now. It's not the same as the survey you're going to get in the email. But if you could, please take a moment now. Um, to answer these questions. I think they should be popping up now. Thank you so much. Um, and our next free craft event is our children's Celebrate and Create event, um, Celebrating Invisible Disability. That's on March 25th from 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. Um, children who attend will be making their own journals. Tickets and materials are free, as always. Um, to look for and learn more about Inform Your Community events, check our Craftivism program, but we have other programs. We've got movie nights and networking events at informyourcommunity.org and more. Um, so if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe, and please consider donating to cover the cost of the materials and shipping if you can. Um, it helps keep our events free for those who can't afford it. Um, thank you for coming and helping inform your communities based on what you learned today.